Hey, this is Jim Dimitri. I'm here at Studio E talking with uh, artist Brian Seifer. Um, Brian and I have known each other for a number of years. I've been following his work. Um, I'm something of a fan. Uh, you may be aware of this. And uh, we're just going to be uh, looking at the works and having a, a kind of informal conversation here about uh, what exactly is going on. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Seifer, the artist. So, I want to begin by uh, kind of looking at this work here. Um, I think uh, I really associate Brian with, uh, you know, looking at the natural world, but I'm going to say not depicting the natural world in any kind of, like, with any degree of realism, but, but more as a an artist who is kind of concerned with the systems of nature and uh, how those systems kind of are structured, how they unfold, um, and, uh, you know, how various aspects of them can be, like, ascertained in a kind of single experience. <laughs> okay, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm looking at this here, and, uh, you know, again, I'm reminded of... Uh, uh, being something of a naturalist myself, I'm reminded of, uh, you know, plant forms and uh, the, the curious kind of synchronicity of, you know, seeds and buds yep. 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 And, and flowers and uh, just, you know, and how these become, you know, uh, not only like uh, things that we experience, but they become kind of... Uh, uh, metaphors for some larger uh, experience, some larger kind of systems at work. Exactly. I, and I just, I, I wanted to know if you, uh, I, guess, I guess that's a good point of departure for sure. talking about this work. The, it, the title of which is? Bound Binary. Ah, very good. Binary. Life and death. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll Light let you dark. proceed. Yeah. Light um, and dark. The, the piece for me is, is <clears throat> well, when I, when I start working, I, I work from a place of, of agnosticism. I don't know what things are going to unfold. I don't know what they're going to become. And so when, when you start pieces, at least for me, um, you know, the, the story of what it is unfolds as you work with it, the, the call and response of forms. So um, for me, this is like a vitrine, a portal. <laughs> it's, it's all these different kind of, I don't want to say like, I'm I don't like the word metaphysical, but you know, th there's there's things that play into the work along with what we see here as organic forms. But it's also more about um, you know th things coexisting within this mirrored world, I guess, uh, to something else that you're not always privy to. And it's kind <laughs> of like the the unknown universe of observation and and how our brains synthesize things and. All those kind of things get put into the work, even though I'm not trying to make that statement. Exactly, they do unfold. So that's kind of like, um, I guess the the feeling about how I feel about this work. So it's it's interesting too to think about that in terms of what I see as this, you know, tension in your work between uh, kind of abstraction and representation. Mm -hmm. That that there's. Um, there's something that coexists between those two realms that is, uh, you know, uh, kind of indicative of how we, we look at nature, yeah. how, you know, we see something and uh, it's not only that thing, but it's uh, a pattern emerges and it becomes representative of, of something, something larger, uh, something that's both fit, physical and, is, as you say, uh, metaphysical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, from that, I just want to ask you, um, you know, how, how do you uh, sit down and, and uh, get started with something like this? Um, I, I think uh, that's a question I'm, I'm yeah. always fascinated with. When, when uh, after you stretch the canvas and uh, sit down in front of this uh, space, uh, what, uh, what, what, what happens? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, at the heart of everything I do is kind of uh, rooted in automatic drawing. Um, okay. Uh, very much from, you know, Andre Masson and the Surrealist and just, you're kind of, you have starting points 
but you allow departure to be welcomed in there. And I think as, as you start drawing in those images or whatever starts to unfold, you start creating the associations of what things mean. And so in, in this case, this, this canvas was a, um, it started out as a stain um, by, by making something, and, uh -huh. but, but the outcome was the result of what happened to it and the other piece, which is not in the show, has the positive of it. So this is kind of a, it was a transfer. So there's a transference of information and then everything else gets, uh, you know, put on the canvas. So it gets loaded, right? The information becomes more, um, I guess, more concise. You start reading into things. You start realizing, okay, you know, the, the border of this shape is, is important, so it's going to stay. You, uh -huh. start, you start going for more, you know, tactile things that you can hold on to. So it's as you work through it, um, things become more present. And, you know, you can't, I don't think, unless you're, you know, painting academically and knowing, you know, with forethought about what a painting is going to be, you know, I, I mean, people paint like that, but I can't find my imagery through that method. So <laughs> yeah. it needs to unfold. That's okay. That's, that's, uh, that's exciting because, um, I mean, some people might describe their, um, experience in their experience of observing the natural world in, in a similar way mm -hmm. would, would you say that uh, when you're uh out and about uh just looking at uh again the, the natural world unfold uh and things that we often don't understand at least um you know uh when we witness certain things taking place whether it's flora or you know, weather or something. Yeah, climate, climate uh, environmental yeah. changes. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's, uh, that's the process. Um, so you would, you would say that that would also describe uh, yeah. that experience. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a filtered observation. It's, yeah. it's, it's trying to hold on what we see and observe in, in our reality, mm -hmm. but there's also got to be the part where, um, the unknown has to play a, it plays a, a role because for me, abstraction is about discovery. It's about mm -hmm. not knowing what you're going to paint yeah. in relation to how you observe the everyday. And um, I do have, you know, there's there's certain formal aspects of my work that I hold on to that aren't they that aren't. Um, it's not like I'm forcing that on there. It's, it's how I think. Mm, yeah. So really, you're just these are just observable thoughts, I guess. Uh, you know, they're they're recordings, they're diaries, they're. Um, their paintings of thinking and that's that's more of how i i approach it wow that's okay that's that i like that the this idea that uh the the forms themselves are ways of um embracing the unknown mm -hmm. <laughs> and and kind of giving them uh, that space to kind of uh for people to experience them and to kind of you know ascertain their meanings yeah yeah i, I like the you know the I want things to be known but unfamiliar, where you have this kind of idea about what the work is about, but it leaves so much more to interpretation depending on who's viewing it. I don't, I don't want to just allow um, a forcing of ideas, <laughs> yeah. you know. But but certain things do, you know, are are more evident. Exactly. So. Well, this this ha has a you know uh, an essence that I think would be familiar to people, especially people who uh, live in the Northwest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, have the experience of, of many winters here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the palette is, uh, at least in this show, is very uh, wintry. Yeah. 